learning through projects is one of the best methods you can use to get your students to learn. There's just so much to it. It can easily integrate student choice, reading, writing, communicating, critical thinking, problem solving, creative thinking. There's just so much, but I know a lot of us often avoid it. I know I did, right? And just kind of use the textbook as a crutch. It's so intimidating, it's so time consuming, and sometimes you're like, what are they even going to end up turning in? Like, oh, is this, is this a good choice for me to be doing? It can be really scary. And another objection that I know I certainly had when starting to think about project-based learning or learning through projects with the kids is that I just thought, oh my gosh, that's just doing too much. It's just too much work and it's gonna be a mess. I don't know, it will just be too much work for me. But then I just wanna to present to you the alternate scenario then. Well, you can just spend almost every day up there on the board um, lecturing or giving a lesson, right? And then the kids will just read, write answers. First read, write answers. From the textbook, maybe you'll have them write essays. So oh, hey, that's something and you'll be grading it for days and days and days and days. <laughs> I hate grading essays. I love it when they write it, right? And I love working them through it, but like I hate the actual grading process. Anyway, that's a that's a tangent. I like assessing. That's different from grading and giving feedback. I do like that, but grading is just different. And you know, maybe I should do another YouTube video on that. I should write that down. Hold on. Anyway, enough with the tangents. Okay. So let's just dive right in. Step one, this is what I do. I usually start by thinking about, well, what do I want them to learn, right? Or what skills do I want them to build? And skills, they're a long-term process. Like learning a skill, acquiring a skill, it's a long-term adventure. And so I think you need to keep that in mind when we're teaching, right? And I just, I start with that. And maybe if you want, like I could say, well, I want them to at least get to this level of proficiency with this skill. Okay, I think that will help you. You're building it more intentionally, but I think just exposing them and giving them practice and continuing to hold them accountable for the results will help. When I'm thinking about goals, learning goals, like the first thing is skill. And then the second thing is the content. What content do I want them to explore? Like big actual ideas, like more overarching themes and ideas. I think that's where you should focus on. If you want specific facts or details that, that you want them to memorize or know, by the end of it, I think you should definitely write that down and find sources for them to um, explore that will have that or some sort of like task uh, within the project to show, to illustrate that point. But see what I mean here? Like when you're thinking about your goals, you're already starting to think about, well, what does what will this project need to have like what kind of project is this going to be okay so that's number one start with your learning goals your skills and the content that you want them to learn like the overarching themes and any like specific facts or details that you want them to have and then step two now that you know what your goals are go ahead and pick the project right like which project is going to help them get to these goals, right? Like maybe it's a diorama, maybe it's an interactive timeline, maybe it's an illustrated storybook, maybe it's a movie, okay? You can pick multiples and give them options. I've done that before in the past, I've really loved it. Or you can just say, no, everyone's going to create a diorama. I've also done that and have had amazing results with either one. I think it's just, it really just matters on what your topic is, okay? And then this step is key here. You want to create a rubric for the kids and just a draft, you yourself, right? And like you really want to key in your goals, like make sure your rubric, the categories are shaped so that they are going to be working towards your learning goals, right? The skills and the content. Just have a draft of what you think it should be. And then when you get to class, you should actually have the students help you create 
the rubric and you can even tell them this is our goal for this project right this is what i want us to do well let's go ahead and look at it and i think it's easier if you yourself actually came up with the category so maybe there's a content category or like a evidence-based category like is there evidence provided right like or details um workmanship definitely should always be there uh, research and then presentation. One of the main reasons why this is so great too and motivating is the whole publishing part where they publish what they create somehow or they present it to their peers. So I usually have that as a category as well. And then once you create the rubric with your kids, um, if it's just one project, like say a diorama, you want to make sure you pull from the internet or past projects you've done where you show them examples of really good work and not so good work and just discuss. Maybe you don't even say anything like, this is what good work looks like and this is what bad work looks like. Just show them side by side and just say, who can tell me what the difference is? Let's analyze this. And obviously you want to protect um, if it's their real projects from the past, you want to, you know, protect kids' identities and not say, oh, little Tommy did this and uh, it's such a bad job, <laughs> clearly, right? But, you know, just say that or uh, what I've done when it's the first time I've done these projects with them, I pull examples from the internet or maybe I make the bad example myself. And then we talk through the process of what makes this good quality work versus bad quality work, right? What are the steps that were taken or not taken and how can we get there? And how does it, how would you grade it using the rubric we just created? And I think just them seeing that, like what this good work look like, but what it looks like next to bad work, it shows them, oh, this is the extra that I have to do. These are the things that I shouldn't do, the mistakes that I should avoid, okay? And then that way too, they have an image in their mind as they work of like, this is the level that I need to produce. When I see my work, does it look more like the bad, the bad example or the good example? So I think that's a very key piece on the front end before you even dive into the work to just have that discussion. So now that you've created a rubric, you showed good examples and bad examples of the project, the next thing is to help them plan, to create an action plan. And this is probably, you wanna break this up. You know, you don't wanna do it all in one day, probably. I've done it in different sessions. Um, so they can go home and kind of let those ideas and discussions percolate about what's good work, what my goal is, etc., and get them excited and thinking about it some more. But once you come back, it's really important to help them plan, right? And it helps you too, so that this is not something that's going to drag on for months. And they know that there are going to be due dates and set time limits, because really with any topic, you can go on and explore it forever, like research them forever. And you don't wanna do that. So what we do is we just figure out what are the tasks, usually with the projects that I assign, um, there's some sort of research piece, right? And I give them, okay, well, we're gonna research and these are the categories we're gonna need to research. Usually like I have that in the content goals, right? Like maybe some of my content goals, for example, there's one project I had them do where they researched their favorite ancient civilization. Well, tell me about how it was governed, right? Like, or what were the groups of people in their society? So those are areas of research for them. So I'd have that like a nice table for them. And then we'd say, okay, let's do like two days of research or three days of research. And then after the research, what do we do? Well, now that we know more, we can envision what the project is going to look like. Let's brainstorm, right? And then plan the actual project. And when you have that done, well, okay, then let's get the materials. When should the materials be in? And then you have like work days. So how many days are we going to do? If it, you're working with older kids, you can 
be vague enough where you say, oh, let's, I'll give you guys five days on this, right? But usually what I've found, I'm, I've been teaching middle school, with middle schoolers and even younger high schoolers, it's much better when you give them a structure or a goal for the day. Like this is research day one, right? Have these areas researched by the end of the day, or this is project work day one. Have the background done by the end of the day uh, and bring in the materials you're going to need for the background, etc. okay? And then, so just really ha set dates and deadlines for those and then that way they know too like well you didn't finish it in class you're gonna have to do it for homework or you're gonna have to put in extra time later tonight um if you're homeschooling like before dinner or something or we'll do it tomorrow you'll have to put in extra work over the weekend or something okay and then finally you know they'll have a due date and then for the due dates what i like to do is have um, they present right and we we would have a rubric for that like and I like to coach them on just presenting and also being an audience like what does it look like to be a good audience and asking questions so that it shows that you're actually really paying attention and being respectful of their ideas and then a self-reflection piece. I think that's very important and ask them questions like, well, what did you enjoy about this? But what areas could you have done better? Or what areas were you really proud of? Like your areas of strength and how would you do things differently next time? What would you do the same, etc. I think that's really important. And then if you have time, discuss it in a safe space and then celebrate, right? Um, display their work and celebrate somehow for us this year i'm doing projects with a couple of my kids and we're going to celebrate at the end of it by um, having like a little fiesta cook food from the different societies that they're studying so just a little something like that i think is very helpful and motivating so i hope that has been helpful just a few little helpful tips how do you guys like to do your projects at home or at school if you have any helpful tips for us please leave them in the comments down below and i hope you're having a blessed day so far have a great day